Well, hello my friends. Today, today's video, which I want to apologize. I did this pine, which um, I know I said it was southern yellow pine throughout the video, but it actually might be Douglas fir. And I turned it and I showed the steps on the turning with some bad camera angles. I was somewhat distracted, I guess, too much turning in one weekend. And I abruptly cut at the end where my wife came into the shop. We started talking. Well, I found a small piece of cherry to make a lid and I don't show how to make the lid but I've done these before basically it was a square piece and I just put it on my spur drive and threw it around measured the, the diameter transferred to that it has a little recess to sit into the recess of the uh, bowl itself and I made a little finial again uh, did not show it uh, very basic finial and Put it on the top which was out of a piece of believe it or not as dark as it is but it was a piece of uh, sea grape an aged piece that i had in here and it came out rather dark darker than i expected and uh, to enhance the lid i did a little bit of scroll work with my uh, texturing tool on there just made a couple of lines and separated with a little bead. So I figured I'm coming in here and just do a presentation of what the whole piece looks like. The profile, even though it was done in two halves, this did not come back to the lathe once I took it off, uh, was done and I tried to flow the same profile as much as I could so it would flow all the way up. Well, here it is, a piece of pine that literally was a piece from the bunk of my trail. And I got another piece left over on this, which came from this piece, which is 4 by 8, I believe. And I cut it about 11 inches in length, more or less, and that's how big the piece is. Well, hope you like it. I know that I posted it on Facebook pictures of it and it's getting amazing uh, feedback. It's like well, the greatest thing ever. <laughs> and I, I just look at it as just another piece. But the fact that the pit went pretty much on center of this piece really gave it some very unique uh, growth rings going up and pretty well uniformed both bottom and top and even the watermark because this was a bunk boat bunk uh, trailer bunk and this was the top and I'm sure that a lot of water always saturated on this salt water that is so uh, all of it game. Well, <laughs> here I am again. It's raining out there, so taking the uh, opportunity of the rainy weather to come in here and do some turning before I head back to Miami on Tuesday so done a couple of pieces this week and this one well you're gonna call me crazy because it's a bunk box what in the world is a bunk box well I some of you know I uh, got a boat recently and I had to switch out the trailer. Well the new trailer I got came with this, the bunks. I had to reset it up for my own boat. Um, 
So I, the bunks that were on it were long, but in other words, the boat sat on here. There was one here, one on the opposite side. I cut them both about three feet off. So I believe this might be a pressure treated. So either way, it would be a southern yellow pine. Uh, actually, I don't think there's any treatment on this, uh, but it should be a southern yellow pine. And the way I'm gonna do this, you can see the orientation, the growth rings going on. It's nice and even. So it caught it right on the pit, almost smack center, which is pretty nice. So this with this bevel cut is going to be towards the top so I can have the flat parts and the longest part of this for uh, my base. So on this particular case, I mean I could do it the way I always do it in between centers, but I'm actually going to uh, put it on my worm screw to get it started and start throwing it. Let's get started. Got it on late and I have what I believe to be a center mark, but it's hard to tell exactly what center is because I have this bevel over here, so that's not the true corner. So I eyed it from up here and that's how I got my corner. So I lined it up perfectly with the square corner, but when I got to this side, I just I straight down on it where I could see the the square part of it and made my mark over there made a mark there this side I did this corner that square and I eyed the other side again and wait to it so here's my center mark right And it's crucial that you get a center when you're doing this type of turning because of the fact that you're gonna have, or at least I'm gonna have, all four legs on the bottom part of it. Uh, stand on the table top. So I go down about three quarters of an inch with this, but I can go further doesn't matter that is the top so this will be dug up for the bowl and that's deep enough more than deep enough for my uh, worm screw Regardless, what if I got this on a worm screw and it's a good uh, holding point or not, still go with my life center in there. And the first thing I'm going to do is make this completely true on the bottom. And I believe that I actually have a pretty well. Yep, and the corners are going to be uh, pretty uniform as well. Not going to take anything from out here because the whole piece is going to sit on these four points. So I'm just gonna graze, just gonna graze it a little bit just to make sure that I'm true this way and all the way. Speed 620 RPM. It's a big piece. I'll speed it up. I'll speed it up once I uh, 
have it on my truck. So you can already see what I'm looking at as to what's going to stand on the tabletop. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do this because the cuts are going to be pretty rough. But I got a long ways to go on here because I wanted this to come up quite a ways on these legs over here as well as this one. So I'm going to go pretty aggressive, pretty deep in here. go a little bit deeper because I actually uh, I'm not gonna go much deeper because it starts rounding off as I go over here so the rest of this I think it's going to droop over to here so let's see what starts developing I like the shape that I got going through these three uh, four sides I like the concealed edging that I I got in here even when I break the sanding off on this I'm thinking that this will soup up in all the, the angles and meet up think that I'm ready to uh, flip this over and put it on the on my spur drive I mean on my uh, chuck cuts don't look bad at all pretty this is gonna be pretty wood grain but very easy to break oh my goodness I've been recording I think I've been recording the tabletop uh, Sorry about that. <clears throat> well, there goes a cut. Huge cut on this. Anyway, you saw that I centered this uh, piece, how I established the center, and basically been in there doing the cuts and brought it up to this point. I think it looks pretty good. I will show some of the back camera, but it really is not the angle that I wanted to capture and I apologize but again just like before. Wipe center in. I'm just not that brave, I guess. Uh, I insist on working with a live center all the time. But why not? It's a safety feature that you should be using all the time um, until you get to the point that you have no choice but to get it out. But when you have a choice, pretty good.
So I'm gonna go in here uh, pretty quickly and bring this up and taper it up. And the way that I see it is I'll be tapering this up like this and coming up to a very tall until I start capturing some of this because the this has to come off all the way across. So the box is going to be a good size. I'm going to chew up a little bit from the middle and start focusing right about here or not. Same speed.
Well, let's see what uh, Yorkshire Greta is going to do on this one. Now this wood has been in fresh water, salt water, you name it. Uh, and uh, what a beautiful wood grain. You know, people are so fixed on exotic woods. I mean, not that this is my taste. My taste is uh, really gnarly stuff. Uh, but, you know, people are always linking their beautiful work, and uh, it is beautiful work, um, of exotic woods that look very much like this. And, uh, you know, what you want to do? It's like anything else, uh, once... Uh, something has a reputation because it's common or because it's whatever it uh, gets labeled as a do not do you know it's not desirable Heck with that. this is if somebody said oh this is an exotic wood then everybody would want it and it would not look any different than what it does. It's just a matter that people want things just for the label. Um, you know, if I told somebody, oh, this is pine, it's like, oh, okay. Uh, and they forget uh, the beauty that uh, is being presented in the front of them, regardless of the wood. You know, I mean, this is a, a, a good, it's not the pine, it's not white pine that you buy very soft and light and uh, you can puncture it with your nail, uh, per se, but uh, it's still, it's still pine. Okay, we got a bunk. Look at the pretty wood grain on that stuff. I know. You hear that rain? No. It's not rain. I thought I was going to be up to my knees in sawdust, huh? I did. I was coming ready to The only drawback is that it chips really easy. Uh, what kind of wood is that? Pine. Oh, it's, pine. it's a southern yellow pine or something like that. Well, it's got grapes to it. I've got this thing.
Well, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again very soon. Take care, and you be safe. Slow down, because we get there a lot quicker at a slow speed than going at a ridiculous high speed and getting hurt as a result. That's the one thing that I can tell you for sure of the biggest safety factor that I can give you is slow down. Take care and be safe.